if Jesus is alive, then why there is so much suffering? If he is risen up, why there is no suffering? This is the question that the Pope raised as part of his Easter message. He did not directly answer the question, but then kind of uh, said that the church has always said that your heart is not open. And that's why you are not getting the benefits. But the Pope was not harsh, but then he did refer to the lot of sufferings that people go through on a personal level because of cancer, and so many diseases, and domestic violence, and violence everywhere, refugees flying from for life, and people being massacred. Why are all these happening? If Jesus is risen, to say that the heart is not open is a good answer, but then not a deep answer. Now we have to look at the resurrection of Jesus. So what does it mean to say that Jesus came back to life? And this is the, what the Bible has to say. Jesus was put to death in the flesh, made alive in the spirit. This is Peter 3.18, Acts 13.34, Corinthians 15.16 as evidence. <clears throat> he was put to death in the flesh and made alive in spirit. This is very important. Because this is what I am interested in, to, in understanding uh, the different existence we have other than the uh, fleshly existence. We have an astral body and that's, we have a causal body. This is what I will be teaching in July uh, 4th, uh, I think, uh, weekend, I think. Uh, uh, for the Guru Purnima for a four day uh, seminar. So you have to understand that he came back and he never disappeared, he is still here. And then uh, you can see when Oral Roberts was healing, is you would say in the, no, I see Jesus now, not with my eyes, he said. But I know he is here and he is asking me, not through words, but I know he is. Touch this boy and I will be healed. This is one of the very early videos of Oral Roberts. And then he goes and touches innumerable cases and they are cured. So you have to know how to get in touch with the astral body. And it is the astral body that is more powerful than the physical body. That's why Jesus, part of the realization of Jesus was, uh, when he said, I have to go. Only when I go or die, then I will be able to send the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost will do everything that I wasn't able to do because I am an embodied being. As an embodied being, we are all terribly limited. Once you get into the body, all kinds of limitations come. And there is no other reality that you can perceive other than the reality of the flesh and blood. And Jesus was very, very aware of the, real, uh, of the fact that how he got limited within the body. And that's why symbolically, uh, before he left uh, during the Last Supper, he just symbolically destroyed his body by uh, breaking the bread 
and letting go of the blood. That is the symbol of the wine, which is the blood. And then the breaking of the bread is uh, the breaking of his body. Now that I am real, I, you know, I am free, that I can do whatever I want to do. So that is uh, what he <laughs> was teaching through the Last Supper. Not many people understand the real meaning of the bread. Why is he breaking the bread and giving the wine and then we're still repeating it without understanding what the real meaning is. He did it symbolically because he wanted to teach this message of being freed of the body and then to look at the power. You know, Jesus was out there to give you power. And he said, the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will give you power. And he, the Holy Spirit did give the power to everyone up to the Pentecostal event. So you have to understand the rising of the astral body of Jesus. Now here I made some notes for you. Uh, as a, this is a John six fifteen. He gave his flesh as a ransom for the world. This is another concept, you know, which ex, which explains the concept of sacrifice, which is a very important concept. Unless you sacrifice, nothing is going to happen. You know, even kings have to sacrifice, but democracies have to come. And I'm not going to go into that because that's a very complex topic. I'm one, I will confine my presentation to uh, the, uh, the resurrection of uh, Jesus' astral body, which is very important because you, have, you don't have to die uh, in order to see your astral body. You can do that even when you are alive, provided you know that you can get out momentarily of the body, an out-of-body experience. Then you can see the physical body, causal body, and the astral body. <clears throat> and uh, uh, Genesis 18 and 1 8 speaks about the spirit taking flesh and then getting limited. So that is a concept uh, that I just spoke about when the spirit can assume. Uh, the body momentarily. So this is what happened when Jesus came and uh, he was eating dinner after the, res the resurrected body. He was eating dinner with the people, with his disciples. And then he broke the bread. And, uh, and people looked at him and he was not there. And he disappeared momentarily. So that's... Uh, and also sometimes he asked people, touch my body and feel it. So he could do that too. But not on a permanent basis. If you had to be in a permanent basis, you had to be born in a physical body and that body will continue. But momentarily you can assume the physical body and then, uh, but that physical body will not uh, last long. And then when you assume the physical body, it can be in many forms, like uh, Mary, for instance, uh, was crying and then uh, Jesus knew that she was crying and then she came to uh, uh, comfort her and then said to Mary, uh, she was, he was comforting uh, Mary in the form of a gardener. And Mary asked, who are you? And uh, he said, I am the rabbi, Jesus. And uh, those of you who want to know more about it, John 20, 14 to 16. Okay, so it is very clear that the, uh, once the body is gone, you have much more freedom. You can use different uh, layers of your body and uh, uh, different sheets of the body 
and uh, we have of your self which is uh, your soul so you have an astral body you have a causal body and then some traditions speak about more bodies there uh, the astral and the causal bodies so it gives you a tremendous amount of freedom when you have an astral body this is what we have to remember on easter day that jesus it was risen there's no doubt about it but there are many atheists and who say that no jesus in every when lived and it's all a myth uh, generated or there are uh, people who are saying that he was a politician and then who really wanted to become the king and then it, it did not happen because he was hanging out with poor people so all kinds of things are going on there but they are not profitable not only they are not profitable they are not uh, facts the fact the literal fact is jesus was a historical figure it's a historical fact that jesus was risen and it is also a fact that he is his energy is available on an easter day and this is how we can relate to jesus so we have to understand how can we see and converse with him how to converse with jesus and then uh, the pope was saying representing the church uh, that our heart is closed <coughs> the heart is not only the physical heart also it can be the physical heart because physical heart has also consciousness of a higher kind <clears throat> uh but you need in a whether it is the heart or the brain you have to have a higher consciousness to see beings that are not visible to our human eyes and you can see through your pineal gland because there's a third eye Uh, because that shuts down your uh, uh, physical world time and space and then you can go into that uh, realm and then see this this is an important message so it is what everybody should uh, realize should understand that jesus can be seen or any god can be seen or you are even Uh, dead relatives can be seen provided you can see with your third eye or with your extraordinary perception and then you can converse with them and then they can do things that you cannot do that's why jesus was doing a lot of miracles and he was not just satisfied with the miracles he was doing as an embodied being that's why he said I have to send the holy spirit and the holy spirit will change everything. He just appeared before uh, uh, Paul and without Paul there won't be any Christianity in my opinion. As a light and he was transformed. Okay. Although Paul had a very uh, you know uh, a cruel death in the hands of the Romans. uh but he was basically responsible for uh, bringing out the true teachings of jesus because he was in touch with jesus so jesus used paul <coughs> to get the message he used all the people all the uh, disciples and evangelists thereafter to carry his message of love the basic message of christianity is love we love one another and that's how care for the people who are on the earth plane uh suffering from sickness and uh, depression and so forth and now uh, the most important thing for us to understand from the uh, resurrection of Christ is to understand the resurrected body of Christ i gave the example of how while he was eating dinner with uh, uh, his disciples 
uh, with the resurrected body, he disappeared. So he is out there. Now I just remember uh, Swami Ramalingam. He was able to turn his body into light. <clears throat> he was able to experience the physical, the, uh, the astral body and uh, the causal body as well. But what he did, um, uh, something very remarkable, uh, is he was able to turn his actual physical body into light. And then lived with that body for uh, maybe a year or two. Uh, and uh, so light was coming out of his body. And but that, light, that body is not sustainable in this world, dense world. So eventually he just said that I'm going to go. But uh, what I'm going to do is now I am in this body, uh, however subtle is this body. But I will get in after uh, after I disappear because he did not die. He did not <coughs> leave any remains of uh, remains of his body. He just uh, said that <coughs> this light body will <coughs> will disappear uh, to your eyes. Will disappear to your eyes. <coughs> but then. What happens is that I will get into the body of everyone and then work towards the evolution of the human race from an embodied being. So this is something that also we'll be talking about in uh, the Guru July 4th seminar on uh, the astral body and the, the castle body. So the best way to see uh, Jesus uh, is to move from your mundane consciousness to uh, uh, a divine consciousness or the perception of a divine consciousness and I'm going to explain to you what that is. Now, now you see only the physical body alone, but you can also see through your mind's eye uh, any being further, just through imagination. And then you can imagine a light body of Christ. How oh, that, uh, uh, you can imagine a light body of Christ. And uh, yeah, this is Christ. In whatever way you, you can imagine whether uh, that is okay. And that is real. That is not untrue. As the imagination becomes stronger and stronger and stronger, that will become a reality. Somebody may ask, why am I, am I cheating myself? Am I hallucinating? You are not cheating yourself, although it can be a hallucination. But hallucination is not unreal. It can eventually become real to you. But you have to get to live in that frame of mind to uh, make it real. So you are the one who is making to making it real or false. So let's say I have another notes here of uh, John 20, 24 and 29. So the question of hallucination and all these fancy terms are only 21st century uh, uh, terminology that Thomas is a doubting Thomas, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, he had questions about the resurrected uh, uh, body of Jesus. So what Jesus did to him, this is uh, John 20, 24 to 29. He appeared before him with all the wounds in his body. Then he, okay, that's fine, he's Jesus. So you have the ability to do all these things when you are a spirit. 
But the important thing to learn is for you to understand that you don't have to die to do all these things. You can do it within your own uh, way, even right now, with, with all this physical body, but have to move out of the body. And one techno technique that I just mentioned is that just visualize the light body. Don't worry about <clears throat> the skepticism that the mind will put out, that this is <clears throat> hallucination, this is not real Jesus. I am just cheating myself. You are, you are cheating yourself by taking this illusionary world as real. Quantum physics says this world is not real. And even Einstein accepted this world is an illusion. But he said, the problem is, it's a persistent illusion. You know, that's because Einstein did not go beyond his senses. He did. Uh, when he talked about intuition uh, being his uh, source for uh, discovering the higher truths, but he never went deep into, uh, into religion. Although he knew that religion is beyond science and she says where science ends, the religion begins. Okay, but he was not a religionist per se. So the one, technology, one technique that you do is just visualize him. Just don't consider his picture, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I have a picture of Jesus here. I'm going to show you a beautiful picture. Somebody send it to me uh, uh, with a note uh, on this day. Uh, so you don't consider it as a picture. Mm, you just consider it uh, um, as something real. Then it will become real. There's a, it's a technology. Then there is a higher technology of changing your breath. As long as you are holding on to your nostril breathing, the lung breathing, <clears throat> you are not going to see at the astral body. In order to see the astral body, you have to have what I call as the pineal breathing. So that's something that I will also teach uh, during uh, the Guru Purnima weekend, July and July. Uh, you have to move the uh, breath to the pineal gland. Momentarily the breath will stop. And why breath? Why do we have to do all these things? Because the breath is nothing but the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is living within you. Jesus said the Holy Spirit is going to help you more than I do. And when the Holy Spirit came, and how did it come? Like a gust of wind. So this wind, which is the air, the breath, is the Holy Spirit. I mean, you know, if you want to understand the Holy Spirit, there are two books that I would recommend. One by, um, I think, uh, a couple of books by uh, Benny Hinn. And where he says, where he's clearly able to see the Holy Spirit as the wind coming in. And then, and the Holy Spirit comes in, you can do miracles. And this is the most important one. That we can completely solve all the uh, unsolvable problems with the help of the Holy Spirit. And that's exactly is the message of Jesus. Just, uh, you know, he experimented uh, uh, you know, the whole human body coming, coming into a human body and doing things and convincing people and that it was not working as good as he wanted it to be. <clears throat> So he thought, well, why don't you just go to the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is also Jesus. The Holy Spirit and uh, God, <clears throat> the Father, uh, and Jesus, they are all one and the same in different forms, in three forms. So the Holy Spirit is the breath. So you should be able to uh, know what the breath is. So when you go to Good Morning America, which is the book that uh, uh, 
Benny Hinn wrote and became very famous. Uh, and also the book by Ro Oral Roberts on Holy Spirit. <coughs> and then uh, this this is this is my uh, Easter message that you have to understand the astral body. <laughs> now you have to understand the Holy Spirit as the as the breath which is within you. And somewhat you can understand by reading these books and also uh, the Bible because Bible is so huge. It so this the small little books by these two people will help you to understand that. So yeah, this is the time for you to get in touch with uh, Jesus. Uh, the mind needs something to hold on. <clears throat> so you can uh, just look at the picture just as I am looking at the picture of Jesus and then go on looking at the picture. Or if you are not there, just close your eyes and imagine a picture of Jesus that comes to your mind. And see the picture as a, as a light. and allow things to happen without intervention of your mind. Although the mind says it's a hallucination and imagination, just discard those thoughts and and put all your attention on the light body of Jesus. Now, There will be some indication for that. I don't want to say what is going to happen, then otherwise you'll start imagining it. So you'll figure out, Jesus will guide you. You have to become an evangelist. The evangelists believe in Jesus. That's why they are able to do the miracles. Every one of you should become an evangelist with deep, deep faith in Jesus and then he will come and communicate with you.
you need to be listening to them to the evangelists and reading their books until you yourself turn turn into an evangelist you have to have the personal experience with christ Jesus will get into your body heal your body He is compassionate incarnate You can see that now happening You will have sensations in those parts of the body which need healing He will solve your financial problems. Talk to him about your financial problems. ask him to give you money to solve your problems he will you now ask him to fix your relationship problems now you pray for the world different countries in the world the wars people are suffering Jesus will love you if you pray for the world and the suffering of other people Just finally pray for the kingdom of God, because that is the my last prayer. Thy kingdom come down to the earth plane, as it is in heaven. That everybody is happy, peaceful, full of love to each other. That's heaven. God bless.